Section Zero of Poems. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Dedication to H. S. T. by Eleanor Jenkins. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Fifteen eight fifteen. Fain had I given precious things and sweet, But having neither frankincense nor gem, Only sad flowers, Last year's fading yield Gathered about that bitter harvest field, I made a sorry garland out of them, And laid it where immortelles had been meet. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. H.S.T. Requiescat by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist We were bereft ere we were well aware Of all our precious fears And had instead a hopeless safety A secure despair We know that fate dealt kindly with our dead Tenderer to that fair face we held so dear Than unto many another's best beloved. Whate'er befall, we know him far removed From all the weary labours of last year. And even in paying this most bitter price, We know the cause worthy the sacrifice. Now he is safe from any further ill, nor toils in peril while at ease we sit, Yet bides our loss in thinking of him still, Of sombre eyes, by sudden laughter lit, Darkened till all the eternal stars shall wane, And lost the incommunicable lore Of cunning fingers, ne'er to limb again, And restless hands at rest for evermore. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Dead Comrade by Eleanor Jenkins. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Courage, invention, mirth, we ill can spare, lie lost with him, the greatest loss of all. We grudge to well one rest, his swiftness to devise and dare, that never failed the call. Thus they all spoke together of the dead, who was their comrade many a dark hour through, as one whose work was ended quite, but he that held him dearest said nothing. For well he knew his friend forsook them not in dying. Often above the din he seemed to hear his well-known voice beloved, often in mud and darkness lying, felt he was working near. By star-shell light oft with that commonplace, familiar kindness knowing not surprise, just as in other nights now lost, suddenly glimpsed his face, unchanged the same sleep-burdened eyes, whimsical brows and laughter-lifted lip, and turned again to labour's lighter groan, glad of that unforgetful soul's imperishable fellowship that left him not to serve alone. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. The Choice by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Too well they saw the road where they must tread Was shrouded in a misty winding sheet 
among whose strangling coils their souls might meet death and delaying not to go they said farewell to hope to dear tasks left undone to well-loved faces and to length of days so came they to the parting of the ways a year agone and saw no way but one others and they were many watched them go but turned not from the pleasant path of ease with hedges full of flowers and fields of sheep their hearts waxed gross battening on braver woe and their eyes heavy god for such as these no trump avails but thine to break their sleep end of poem this recording is in the public domain the house by the highway by eleanor jenkins read for librivox.org by newgate novelist all night from the quiet street comes the sound without pause or break of the marching legion's feet to listeners lying awake their faces may none descry night folds them close like a pall but the feet of them passing by tramp on the hearts of all what comforting makes them strong what trust and what fears have they that march without music or song to death at the end of the way what faith in our victory what hopes that beguile and bless what heaven-sent hilarity what mirth and what weariness what valour from vanished years in the heart of youth confined what wellsprings of unshed tears for the loves they leave behind no sleep my soul to befriend no voice neither answering light but darkness that knows no end and feet going by in the night End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Night in the Suburbs, August 1914 by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist The misty night broods o'er this peopled place Chimneys and trees stand black against the sky. One goes belated by with echoing pace and careless whistle, shrilling loud and high. And ere his steps into the stillness merge, some labouring giant of our later day passes with hollow roar of distant surge and clouds of steam as white as ocean spray. In turn the lighted windows, twinkling fair, darken, till all these earth-born stars are down. Stained dusky red by the great city's glare, the waning moon hangs low o'er London town. E'en now that moon in her own silver guise looks down on some stretched on a stricken plain, Yet she shows red unto their blood-dimmed eyes That never shall behold the sun again. We, weary of the idle watch we keep, Turn from the window to our sure repose, And pass into the pleasant realms of sleep, Or snug and drowsy muse upon their woes. And whether we that sleep, or they that wake, We that have laboured light and slumber well, Or they that bled and battled for our sake, 
have the best portion scarce seems hard to tell soon shall the sun behold them where they lie yet his fierce rays may never warm them more no further need have they to strive or cry they have found rest that laboured long and sore while we take up again in street and mart the burden and the business of the day and which of these two is the better part god only knows whose face is turned away end of poem this recording is in the public domain Autumn Wind by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist A month ago they marched to fight Away twixt the woodland and the sown I walked that lonely road tonight And yet I could not feel alone The voice of the wind called shrill and high Like a bugle band of ghosts and the restless leaves that shuffled by seemed the tread of the phantom hosts. Mayhap when the shadows gather round and the low skies lower with rain, the dead that rot upon outland ground march down the road again. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Battle of the Rivers by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist For fifteen hundred valiant men and tried These waters were as leafies Dark and deep and bitter as the bitterest tears we weep Their high hearts rose above the swollen tide Fain of the foe upon the further side Though in death's draught their lips they needs must steep, Since their own lives their valour might not keep, Our tall young men drank of that cup and died. Now are their faces hidden from the sky, Under the trampled turf where last they trod, Yet unforsaken sleeps that sad array, the living hearts of all their mothers lie buried with them and beat below the sod as their poor pulse could stir the senseless clay end of poem this recording is in the public domain a legend of ypres by elena jenkins read for librivox.org by Newgate Novelist Before the throne the spirits of the slain with a loud voice importunately cried O oh, Lord of hosts whose name be glorified scarce may the line one onslaught more sustain wanting our help let it not be in vain not all in vain O oh God that we have died and smiling on them our good lord replied be gone then foolish ones and fight again our eyes were holden that we saw them not disheartened foes beheld our prisoners said behind us massed a mighty host indeed where no host was on comrades unforgot we thought and knew that all those valiant dead forewent their rest to save us at our need end of poem this recording is in the public domain ecce homo by eleanor jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist 
He hung upon a wayside calvary, from whence no more the carven Christ looks down with wide, blank eyes beneath the thorny crown on the devout and careless passing by. The cross had shaken with his agony, his blood had stained the dancing grasses brown, but when we found him, though the weary frown that waited on death's long-delayed mercy still bent his brow, yet he was dead and cold, with drooping head and patient eyes astare that would not shut. As we stood turned to ice, the sun remembered Golgotha of old, and made a halo of his yellow hair in mockery of that fruitless sacrifice. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. April Nights by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist When the night watches slowly dawnwards creep And heavy darkness lays her leaden wings On aged eyes that ache but cannot weep For burning time hath dried the water springs Yearneth the watcher then with sleepless pain for eager hearts that in the grave lie cold, for all the toil and pride of years made vain, and grieveth sore to be alive and old. Without, the lost wind desolately crying scatters poor spring's frail children rent and torn, and when the moon looks, Wearily a-dying, a moment thwart her shroud, faint and forlorn, Gleams ghostly through the trees her fickle light on barren blossoms, strewn upon the night. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rupert Brooke, April 1915, by Eleanor Jenkins, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Young and great-hearted, went he forth to dare death on the field of honour. All he sought was leave to lay life down a thing of naught, and spill its hopes and promise on the air. Then, lest vile foes should vaunt a spoil so rare, The son that loved him gave a kiss death fraught, Quenching the heaven-enkindled fire that wrought fair fancies, Bodied forth in words more fair, And lit the dreaming beauty of his face, With tender mirth and strength-begetting trust, Impotent strength, and mirth that might not save. Therefore we mourn, counting each vanished grace. Now was so much, since dust returned to dust, cribbed in the compass of a narrow grave. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Last Evening by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Round a bright isle, set in a sea of gloom, We sat together, dining, And spoke and laughed even as in better times, Though each one knew no other might misdoubt the doom That marched, moment by moment, nigher whose couriers knocked on every heart like death, and changed all things familiar to our sight into strange shapes and grieving ghosts that wept. The crimson-shaded light shed in the garden roses of red fire that burned and bloomed on the decorous limes. 
the hungry night that lay in wait without made blind blue eyes against the silver's shining and waked the affrighted candles with its breath out of their steady sleep while round the room the shadows crouched and crept among the legions of beleaguering fears still we sat on and kept them still at bay a little while a little longer yet and wooed the hurrying moments to forget what we remembered well till the hour struck then desperately we sought and found no further respite only tears we would not shed and words we might not say we needs must know that now the time was come yet still against the strangling foe we fought and some of us were brave and some borrowed a bubble courage nigh to breaking and he that went perforce went speedily and stayed not for leave-taking but even in going as he would dispel the bitterness of incomplete goodbyes he paused within the circle of dim light and turned to us a face lit seemingly less by the lamp than by his shining eyes so in the radiance of his mastered fate a moment stood our soldier by the gate and laughed his long farewell then passed into the silence and the night End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Letter by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist She read the words of him that was her own. The dauntless brow that grief itself had steeled quickened with listening ever not in vain amid brave stories of the stricken field for strange sad echoes from a child's heart grown untimely old that scarce will dance again this side the grave but nathless keeps a leaven of mirth most bitter sweet so changed her face twixt pride and sorrowing as stirs and shadows sun-bleached wheat with winds that walk the stair of heaven and high clouds hovering end of poem this recording is in the public domain frigga up to date by eleanor jenkins read for LibriVox.org by newgate novelist For the last time I kissed the lips of my dearest son, For the last time looked in his face, My brave, my beautiful one, Reaching up to his breast, But lately as low as my knee, I felt with my hands in his heart A shadow I might not see. Scarce could I bid him farewell, scarce to bless him find breath for i felt the shape of the shade and knew twas the shadow of death end of poem this recording is in the public domain farewells a la mode by eleanor jenkins read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist the limbs she bore and cherished tenderly and rocked against her heart with loving fears through helpless infancy that all endears unto the verge of manhood's empery were fostered for this cruel end and she kneeling beside him looks through blinding tears down the long vista of the lonely years void of all light drear as eternity but her young son 
who knows not that he dies, gives good night lightly on the utmost brink, and, anguish overmastered for her sake, says smiling with stiff lips and death-dimmed eyes, Why, mother, if you kiss me so, I'll think you'll not be here tomorrow when I wake. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sunset by Eleanor Jenkins. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Dear is young morning's tender hued attire. To us and ours, stead of that promise, came a brief and burning sunset, blood and flame, and, looking on the end of our desire, yet said we, What if fealty to a name have built our hearts beloved a funeral pyre? Their death hath kindled a fair beacon fire to lighten all this world of fear and shame, and none shall quench it. As the words were said, darkened and failed the strange, unearthly light, and faded all the surging sea of gold, and naught was left of the fierce glories fled, but ashen skies slow deepening into night, lit by pale memory's stars that shake for cold. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sir Sim Corda by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist O oh, faint and feeble-hearted, comfort ye, nor shame those dead whose death was great indeed, greater their life in death. It doth not need, since we seek strength where healing may not be, faith in fair fables of eternal rest, nor seer's eyes to look beyond the grave. That they endured and dared for us shall save our souls alive. They met, how tenderest, pain without plaint, and death without dismay, bore and beheld sorrows unspeakable, yet shrank not from that double-edged distress, but, eyes set steadfastly where ends the way, they through all perils laughed and laboured well, nor ceased from mercy on the merciless. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lying in State by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist if with his fathers he had fallen asleep, Far different would have been this drear-like wake. Lonely and lampless lies he, For whose sake many might well a night-long vigil keep, And, though we have not time nor heart to weep, Yet fain would we some slight observance make, Ere sad to-morrow's earliest dawn shall break, When he must lie yet darker and more deep. Therefore we've laid him neath a chestnut tree, That bears a myriad candles all alight, And faintly glimmering through the starry gloom, No dimmer than a holy vault might be, It sheds abroad upon the quiet night, a gentle radiance, and a faint perfume. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Wind Peddlers by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist 
Purple and grey the vacant moor lies spread, And all the storms of heaven sweep and cry Among the barrows of forgotten dead Who died as we shall die. There dwelt of yore, upon such desert land, Strange merchants of a stranger merchandise, Who stole the winds from out God's hollowed hand And loosed them at a price. Thither, mayhap, the reaving marchman rode, And bought a gale to ruffle the red cock That he would set upon his foe's abode, and leave no standing stock. And thither, with hearts tossing to and fro on stormy seas, came foolish maids and fain, and chaffered for a favouring wind to blow their lovers home again. Oh, were such mighty witches living still, whose whistle tempests and light airs obeyed, we have more need the wind should do our will than e'er had a lovesick maid. At body's peril and in soul's despite, we would give all we had of gold and gem for a west wind where our beloved fight to blow the reek from them. But these wind peddlers with their hard-earned fee mocked and forsaken of the fiend their sire, spite of all powers of spell and grammary, passed long ago in fire. So to high God let humble prayers be said, from bursting hearts that wait in vain, and he, in his good time, when all your dears are dead, may stoop to answer ye. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dulce et Decorum by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist We buried of our dead the dearest one, said each to other here then let him lie and they may find the place when all is done from the old may tree standing guard nearby strong limbs whereon the wasted life-blood dries and soft cheeks that a girl might wish her own a scholar's brow or shadowing valiant eyes, henceforth shall pleasure charnel worms alone. For we that loved him covered up his face and laid him in the sodden earth away and left him lying in that lonely place to rot and moulder with the mouldering clay. The hawthorn that above his grave head grew, like an old crone toward the raw earth bowed, wept softly over him the whole night through, and made him of her tears a glimmering shroud. O oh, Lord of hosts, no hallowed prayer we bring, here for thy grace is no importuning, no room for those that will not strive nor cry when loving kindness with our dead lies slain. Give us our father's heathen hearts again, valour to dare and fortitude to die. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Suckery by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist In a strange burial ground, searching strange graves above, By a sure sign I found where lay my love. 
bluer than summer skies, than summer seas more blue, looked from the dust his eyes, whose death I rue. Sweet eyes of my sweet slain, lost all these weary hours, lo, I beheld again, turned into flowers. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dreams Trespassing by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Of all the spectres feared and then forgot That haunt us sleeping, this is dreadfulest. Still to seek help and find it not Through those dim lands that sleep and know not rest, Followed for ever by a formless fear That drawing near and nearer Hungrily lowers against our dearest dear, And naught can shield them from that jeopardy. To see the unknown horror rearing slow, Hang high above them like a craning wave, And in that endless moment No intolerable impotence to save. Yet whelmed the dream doom never one dear head, our own hearts woke us with their passionate beat. Straightway we found all peril fled, And lay, awaiting dawn's deliverance sweet. Now growing with the strengthening daylight strong, Doth that ill dream, the sleep world's confines breaking, Walk at our elbow all day long, to leave us only at a worse awaking. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. What shall be done with all these tears of ours? By Eleanor Jenkins. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. The poor proud mother in the sad old tale That wept her lovely children's loss in vain Grew one with her own tears most bitter rain. The immortal gods that spared not for her wail Then made from out her grief's eternal flow A never-failing fountain, At whose brink wayfaring men oft stooped them down to drink and blessed those gods whose envy wrought her woe. So may these bitter springs with years grow sweet, and dwelling ever upward full and strong, as when from many a broken heart they burst, stain not for frost nor fail for summer heat, but make fair pools life's desert way along, where unborn generations slake their thirst. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In Hereford Cathedral by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist While the noonday prayers were said for the warriors in our war, and many bowed the head with heavy hearts and sore, each with his voiceless dread, each with his hidden pain, each thinking on his own, the living and the dead. Then on the pillared stone behind the altar fell a cross shaped stain. A shadow strong and dark that all may mark, and know it well, That doth dear one's salvation spell. A while the sad sign stayed, and the shadow shape, Concealed in the hearts of them that prayed, Stood for a space revealed. End of poem. 
This recording is in the public domain. Poppy Fields by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist A wilderness were better than this place Where foregone seasons set a gentle spell Decking it with such fair and tender grace An angel might be pleased here to dwell now all its gay delights are dismal grown in the full glory of the summer time as from the horror of some evil thing its every grace had flown laid under penance for an unknown crime the garden close lies sick and sorrowing pale in the sultry splendour of the day each shoot a finger Stiffened wearily, the harsh-leaved rosemary stands stark and grey, pointing at that which none may ever see, and darker grows the pansy's brooding face with dark foreboding, and the lily's cup turns loathsome, festering sourly in the sun. In the cypress's embrace, the valiant-scented bay is swallowed up, the roses all have withered, one by one. Beyond the close, smothering the wholesome corn, A flight of scarlet locusts fallen to earth, Baleful, and blighting all that they adorn, The burnished heralds of a bitterer dearth, Coral and flame and blood among the gold, Like eastern armies gorgeously dight, and raised by gramary from English sod, With banners brave unrolled, Each silken tent enclosing dusky night, Drowsy dream-laden poppies beck and nod. Brighter than stains of that imperial hue Spilled from the vats of sea-enthroned Tyre, Their flaunting ranks grow dull and blow anew, from smouldering rubies to fierce coals of fire, As though the thunder-burdened air of noon, The slow clouds slowly drift and pass, Casting soft shifting shadows on the field. Alas, and all too soon, The wearied eye gins ache for shaded grass, Though the charmed sense would to the glamour yield. Now that love's rose has crumbled into dust, And naught is left but sharp envenomed thorns, Burning remorse with many a cruel thrust, Bitter regret that unavailing mourns, Now thought is fear and memory is pain, And hope a sickly pulse that will not cease, And fame a gaping grave whereby we weep, Nowhere now doth remain a place of refuge for us, or release, save in the shadowy wastes of idle sleep. Therefore, scorn not these flowers of fantasy, that blow about the ivory gate of dreams, for though they have not truth or constancy, yet very fair their idle semblance seems. Though short the blessed relief they bring to woe, And wakening the worm gins gnaw again, Yet comely truth is grown a grim death's head. Fly the unconquerable foe, Go, in an empty dream lost joys regain, And down among the poppies meet your dead. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Artificial Light by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Warm and golden and dear, In custom and kindness set, We builded against our fear A place wherein to forget Darkness that rings us near. Here our hearts we deceive and will not understand. 
whether we laugh or grieve we dwell in a lamp-lit land a land of make-believe not too high for our pride whereto we are ever bond nor for our souls too wide and all is night beyond where monstrous things abide still without ceasing we watch on our stronghold keep lest lamps burn flickeringly and while we slumber and sleep outcast eternity break in a moment through our soul-built barriers slight look in on us with blue lustreless eyes whose light life everlasting slew heavy with endless days with endless wisdom sad should those eyes behold our days and our loves wherein we are glad we might not abide their gaze our sorrows flee fast away like shadows before the morn in the light of eternal day pale all our joys forlorn elf gold that will not stay find we looking again for all our cherished treasures and all our labours vain weariness all our pleasures and worthless all our pain our vanities kissed and curled ere the swift vision is gone into the void are hurled but we ourselves live on waifs in a blasted world where light and laughter and love lie dead in the dark together and we brood their dust above knowing not surely whether tis life at our hearts doth move lost without remedy we sit under pitiless skies mourning the moment we looked with our finite eyes into infinity end of poem this recording is in the public domain Epitaph on a Child Left Buried Abroad by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Father, forget not, now that we must go, A little one in alien earth low laid. Send some kind angel when thy trumpets blow, Lest he should wake alone and be afraid. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Veronica by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist She lifted up her eyes and looked at me. Straightway, methought that I was gazing down Through lacy lattices of meadow grass into the face of that low little flower that holds all fathomless eternity inscrutable immeasurable dusks heart-breaking blue and night's first timid star prisoned and mirrored in a shallow cup so small a single dewdrop would o'erflow it so frail no vagrant bee could rest thereon but unaware of its own loveliness this symbol of all mysteries sad and sweet fixes on heaven the wide unwinking stare of blind bright eyes coloured and glorified by light and hues it apprehendeth not even so lovely senseless and aloof Round-eyed Veronica looked up at me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Moonlight by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist 
Even as walk on middle earth the shades of the unquiet dead, That loathe the graves allotted them from birth, And wander without end, uncomforted, So the dead moon, poor restless rover, That died by fire, long, long ago, Wanders forlorn the steeps of heaven over, with death's despair and life's outwearied woe she journeys, a reluctant lustre giving to this world's throbbing life and strong, and, being dead, envieth all things living, and sheds a passing death her beams along. In that weird corpse light worse than dark, all fair things for a little die. The spellbound earth lies, colourless and stark, Beneath the wan ghost witch's jealous eye. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Waking by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist so fair a dream last night my heart had kissed, I sought some token of it, but t'would give nothing, save formless fancies fugitive, that slipped from words encirclement away, as, when hell's shades gan quicken with the day, his lost beloved fled the lutinist. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Feather Boats by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist While the wind low o'er the green pool creeps, Spoiling with kisses the wood's mirrored beauty, Kneel we close down by the margin, Preparing to launch the frail craft on those perilous deeps. Swift the wind takes them, we lean to see, Over the water gallantly faring forth our fantastical argosy. Silver-white galleons beating to seaward, Freighted with fancies lighter than foam, Bound for far havens and tall towns enchanted, Stir sleepy breezes and bring them safe home. Cabot sailing forever and ever To the unknown where the wild ducks nest, Morgan mooring to rape the treasure Hid in a lily's unsullied breast, Nearer, in shore among lowering leaf bergs, Franklin crushed on his fatal quest. So I behold in your eyes reawaken brave sad tales that the sea wind sings, tales of old mariners daring hid dangers, ghosts of forgotten adventurings. Heart of my heart, in your manhood's hereafter, When you've grown taller and harder to please, Will you turn sometimes your wandering wishes Back to the hours when with eyes full of laughter You watched where the daydreaming willow trees Dipped their long fingers to catch at the fishes Mock sails flying on mimic seas. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Lover's Walk by Eleanor Jenkins. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Two lovers walked in a green garden way. Neath towering poplar pillars all a row, 
the still june midnight close about them lay they whispered soft and low though they could feel no wind they heard it creep high in the poplars whispering secret schemes the tall trees stood as sentinels asleep and listening through their dreams the full moon's white fire lamp hung round and fair above the highest poplar's shivering crest the lazy fountain's waters stirred the air and softly sank to rest unseen the honeysuckle trailed that fills the dim air with its heavy sweet perfume but the wan fire-eyed wraiths of daffodils stared spectral through the gloom they felt no footsteps fall beside their own but long their like had loved the garden well and never too may walk this walk alone their presence wakes a spell when here live lovers loiter to and fro with tender words and lips of kisses fain then those dead men that walked here long ago meet their lost loves again the grey dew keeps no traces of their feet their speech is lighter than the bat's shrill cry they hover where of yore they used to meet like shadows passing by though many wander where the moonlight lies yet are they lonely as in life they were for each ghost looks into his own love's eyes and sees no other there and when the living lips their farewells frame and the live feet turn to the garden door the shades depart in darkness as they came and are not any more Did those two guess who loved that night in June That others trod the grass as well as they And won from them a passing moment's boon To love as in life's day? Or did they think in that still haunted place As those poor phantoms were they soon must be and pluck at other unknown lovers' grace the joys that once were free. Perchance their glad hearts thrust such thoughts away, of that night's tryst no more than this they own, that they too, in a grassy garden way, once walked an hour alone. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Harvest by Eleanor Jenkins. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. There are hollyhocks in my garden, from the garden of paradise. I got them at a price. The loveliest, stateliest things that in ruined Eden grow, with their tender colourings, coral and rose and cream, I have them here in a row, with broad leaves all held out in gracious posturings, and faces that muse and dream. And I wonder, as I come, what it is they think about, and I wonder, as I go, how much my hollyhocks know. At Amora by the waters, bitter waters for me, the mothers of these fair daughters grew in the wilderness, between a flood and a drought, and between a strife and a sleep, 
in a moment stolen from the press of battle and weariness when dawn made a fair ghost eden creep from its grave in the sands about he found them and thought of me and i planted them here round the gate for i said if he comes again when summer flowers blow he shall see from the turn of the lane how green his sweet thoughts grow so i doted and planned and planted them every one as shrivelled as the lips of the dead as dry as bones in the sun and when i thought of his hand who pulled me the seed and shed grace from a niggard land over far sundering seas my heart could not believe that life might be stronger in these a foolish heart yet twere well could i hold by that broken trust since from each withered shell twenty tall beauties have grown when shall i gather my own from a little whispering dust on the desert dawn winds blown my son will not come through the garden my hollyhocks round the gate summer by summer wait end of poem this recording is in the public domain in a byway by eleanor jenkins read for librivox.org by newgate novelist all along the empty moon-white road the trees gleam faintly beautiful ghosts by the ghost dim wall in a world of moonshine ghosts black shadows live alonely and ever through the shadows and the shining a weary ghost i go up and down and up and down in the moonlight and bruise my ghostly feet against the heels of my shadow end of poem this recording is in the public domain haunted by eleanor jenkins read for librivox.org when you gate novelist when the long night sickened for morning and in bed i lay sorrowing very high over the house through thinning darkness i heard his engines sing when my window framed a plaque of turquoise lucent with the glories of the day he came on thunderous wings a golden phoenix gleamed and was gone away when dusk was ashen on the river low down against an amber sky i saw him fading dwindling in the distance where sunset colours die and when i walked late by the veiled lamps through loud streets purple with the night across the faint starred sky between the housetops slid noiselessly his light thus in all men's deeds i see him only is it only my folly that i see or some shadow of his soul's fairer voyaging that dimly falls on me end of poem this recording is in the public domain Night by Eleanor Jenkins, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Now between us and heaven blooms the great iris flower of night and blooms alone. It sprang from twilight's withered sheath full blown. Its shadow touched the blossoms of the light 
and they are gone. Where the moon sets cloudily, it is striped with black and silver bars, its broad falls spread in luminous purple hollows dream-haunted, dim lovely petals bearded with dim stars in heaven's stead. The sky is very near tonight, the clouds hang thick and low, riftless but heaving smooth and slow, like a live thing breathing light. Nearer and nearer with every stir brood the broad ruffled pinions, dressed in tenderer hues and lovelier than ever was nesting pigeon's breast. Depth behind plumy depth is shown, dusky softness with dove grey lined, surely yet softer depths are behind that no man's soul has known. Yet, just now, in the smother of down, opened a lazy sickle eye, and I saw the peace of the darkness drown in the light of its golden cruelty. The kind clouds hide the dreadful thing, close curled where they parted in sunder. O oh, children of men, I wonder, under whose wings are you sleeping? The curtains are closely drawn, and darkness lies on my face like velvet, and between my fingers like silk. Every cranny of the room is filled with it, as softly as a fluted jug is filled with milk. I was alone with my own familiar things, my bed, my cupboard, my looking-glass and my chair, when I pulled the curtains and filled the room with the dark, so I know that nothing strange could find hiding there. But the night outside is lit with the stars and the snow, and a stony moon, swung low from the blackened sky over shining white spaces, naked and still and cold, and ghost trees haunting the place where their stark shadows lie. What should I do if the night found a chink in the blind, and the gaunt bright snows, and the skies that I would not see, and the hollow emptiness behind the stars, and the echoing silences, were shut in with me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Perversity by Elena Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist When you were by, your beauty stung my eyes and parched my mouth. I turned away and would not look again, and so found ease. But now tis otherwise. Now you are dead, I am thirsty for that pain, and for that loveliness where spilled it lies. Not all the dew-drenched gardens of the south, not all the snows, not all the whispering rain, not all the fountains of the riven skies can quench this drouth. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. From the French of Paul Four by Eleanor Jenkins. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. This girl is dead. She is dead, she died a love's way. They carried her to her grave, to her grave at the break of day. They put her to bed alone, alone in her tirings gay. They put her to bed alone, all alone in her coffin. Home they went gaily, gaily home with the day, sang they gaily, 
gaily a roundelay. This girl is dead, she is dead, she died love's way. They went to the fields, to the fields as on every day. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Good Night by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Lowly and lonely as he did lie Where friend and foe had missed him Suddenly out of a windy sky the moon looked down and kissed him. No other comfort gat he, nor grace, Blessing he got no other. Only the kind moon saw his face And kissed him for his mother. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Spell for a Story Heading by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist White wood ash from a warm hearthstone Dust upgathered where four roads part And five bright king cups lately blown These shall give the desire of your heart Dust the winds lightly bear away, Drear dead ash from a dying fire, Blooms that wither ere dusks the day, How should these give you your heart's desire? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Night Duty by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Just at the turn of the night When the candles all burn low People I cannot see Softly through the old house go There's nobody on the landing The men are all in bed Dusky on each dim white pillow Lies every roughened head. Still I hear stealthy feet moving, Though only darkness is there. Never a tired old ghost Trod so light on the stair. Softly the shadows stir, Softly the footfalls creep, Softly, softly come the mothers To look at their sons asleep. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Golden Wedding by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist this gold is drawn from half a hundred years, Bright gold of mirth, and heavy gold of sorrow, And golden memories, and golden tears, And love's warm gold that even shadows borrow, And golden harvest of sweet hopes fulfilled, And frustrate hope, that heart to heart endears, From a fair treasure house this day will gild. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Grief by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Out of my window the morning is blue With cloud fields of pale shining lilies spread over tree-tops that spring has purpled anew, Over sweet birds flying, its grace is shed. But I, I think of my bird that's dead, That fronted never these blossoming skies, 
And darkly and coldly the heart of me lies, Low as my bird lay low, The night immutable in his eyes, And thick on his broken wings the snow. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. I Loved in Days That Were by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist I loved in days that were A fair boy and young His eyes danced to an air That his heart sung So brave a grace he had All they that passed by Looked on him and were glad, but knew not why. My love went out from me to walk a dark way, Hill things to hear and see by night and day. Death stood close at his side, who knew not death, And strong men round him cried, with their last breath. My love came back to me, a man that went a child. Still was he fair to see, and still he smiled. So one might smile, no doubt, who died to save, and twas with fear cast out his eyes were brave. He had grown too high for my whim. Out of the ease of my lot, I stretched my hands to him, and reached him not. O oh, maids that mourn, give ear, with ghosts ye wed. How shall I win my dear, whose heart is dead? You grieve your loves are slain, tis worse for me. My love came back in vain, yet twas not he. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Orchard by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Dost remember the apple orchard Where we two used to play And the stream among the brambles That sang to it all the day? Dost remember the apple orchard And the birds that nested there When sweet shrill voices quickened The May morn's languid air? While the grieving primroses in the grass Looked up through the morning mist And envied the apple blossoms The rosy dawn had kissed. Dost remember the apple orchard That smelled so sweet in the sun And the cool sea wind in the branches When the August day was done? The fallen apples on the grass Gleamed red as fairy gold and tasted sweet as the honey mead the good folk drank of old. Dost remember the apple orchard when the trees were grey and bare, their trunks still bowed by the memory of the load that once was there, and the change that came with twilight on each twisted lichened limb? Strange half-seen faces and clutching hands When the winter dusk grew dim. Dear love, though I forget thee As like as not I may, I'll not forget the orchard Where we two used to play. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Omen by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist There came to me no voice accursed In the birth-night of my woe, 
but i felt the sigh of a babe i nursed a score of years ago there came to me no sheeted ghost out of the wind and the rain but the babe that a score of years had lost stood in my arms again end of poem this recording is in the public domain Epitaphs by Eleanor Jenkins, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. One. I loved my babe. I could not let him go to the cold grave alone. Here in my arms he sleepeth, lying low. Still is he all my own. Two. Flanders. Here sleeps, in this great muster of the brave, The gentlest heart that e'er found soldier's grave. 3. It vexed me once that I, who lately lay on Helen's breast, Must make my bed of clay. Now sleep I sound, oh, envy not my rest, now clay is one to me with Helen's breast. Four. Since I henceforth this lonely bed must keep, Seek out my black-eyed love who wakes and cries, And dry, yea, even with kisses, her black eyes, For her weeping mars my sleep. Five. On a singer. Pity your ears, you pass too late this way. Pity a singing throat that's choked with clay. 6. On an unknown airman. Earth's truant son who dared the homeless skies, Here safely in his mother's bosom lies. On A. L. J. 1. No, whoso passes by, this grave mound covers a man without peer among valiant ones. Maiden, his breast was goodlier than your lover's. Mother, his brow was nobler than your son's. 2. I, who left the grave of my husband far away, to seek my children and cherish them, have hidden in this earth the beauty and strength of my first-born son. 3. Unto this end of a brave life and brief, all lovers and all sorrowers draw near. Ye that have hope, a fairer hope lies here, and ye that mourn, Behold a deeper grief. 4. Vainly to give this sorrow tongue I seek, O oh, sweet-voiced brother, it may not be told. 4. Even as I move my lips to speak, I find no words remembering yours are cold. Or this. Long have I sought to match your high endeavour, brother, with words, but all in vain I seek. For when I think your voice is still forever, I want the heart to speak. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Venus by Eleanor Jenkins Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Soldier and poet, we you loved bring laurel, Bring burnished laurel and sharp-scented bay, Bays to the poet, laurels to the soldier, The last vain gifts before we go our way. 
All your sweet songs dumb in the dust lie with you. All your great deeds ash on war's altars lie. Now we that loved you crown you once and leave you. Poet and soldier, greeting and goodbye. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. And end of Poems by Eleanor Jenkins. Thank you for listening.